Greetings. Welcome to another edition of the Emotional Healthy Church of the Ephesian Primitive Baptist Church. I am Pastor Cornelius Hill, and I have with us the lovely Lady Meredith. Yes, Townsend. She's flash. She has all of these things going on. She's life coach. She's professional development coach. She's soon to be author. And we're waiting on this book. She's psalmist. She's directress. She's evangelist. How many is do we have in your name? <laughs> Just a child of God. Oh, we go. They're so humble. So, <laughs> so mad. It's like, just kill me with that. You what? have to be humble. You especially you have to be. You have to be. You can't get above yourself. yourself. I'm not saying that, but I just know <clears throat> your vitae is fairly lengthy. Can I say it that way? I I understand that. Yes. So before we even get into this Bible book study tonight, the emotional health of the church, tell me a little bit about where you are emotionally. Honestly. <laughs> Without getting too, I I'm not going to get deep on you, and I'm I mean, not going to get too much. Why not? But I, honestly, I honestly, if you ever think about seasons, okay, we all go through seasons in our life of different emotions, and at this point, as a woman of God, as a mom, as you know, all the different hats that you wear, um, we get very emotional especially in the time i i'm just gonna be transparent with you all february just left right february not... just left and how many of you know that when you february has just gone it's a month of love and everything and people saying well love god well love god you you want somebody to love like right beside you to love to to uh what what is the uh, the vow say to honor to obey you know <laughs> to all these different things you know and when you see you know i intentionally did not get on facebook that day <laughs> Because I knew that there was going to be pictures everywhere and people love you, Debbie. And I desire to be married. So it was very emotional. This is a very emotional month. You know, So and, I, and I'm being transparent. Like you, I, I'm human on one end, but I, I have the spirit of God on another end. So this is a very emotional month for me. I don't know about anybody else, but for me, it's very emotional. You know, so, so yeah, my emotions right now pretty much are everywhere. Wonderful. Because that's the woman side of me. But, you know. Is there another side other than the woman side? I mean, oh, oh, let's just be honest. It's all, you are a human being. Yes. And that's why we're here to discuss healthy emotions as a human being. Because right, according to this book, he says, my spiritual maturity is inextricably tied to my emotional health. You cannot of separate course. the two. You can't. That's where we are, you know. That's where we, we got to be honest about that. About what part? About all of it. That sometimes I'm up on top of the mountain, and sometimes I'm in the valley. Listen. I got to be honest about that, because how can God heal something that you are not honest about? We are everybody. Everybody's always trying to say, "Oh, I'm good. I'm good." But behind that, I'm good. Are you good? You know. And sometimes you got to be honest about it so that you can heal, so that we can come up with some solutions, so that we can have an emotionally healthy church. Well, tonight, here it is, your PowerPoint again. There is a quick activity that is really needed and necessary that we really need to go through and look at. And I'm going to actually make this the full screen. And I'll bring us down at the bottom. And it says... Am I regularly able to enter into other people's worlds and feelings, connecting deeply with them and taking time to imagine what it feels like to live in their shoes? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's the definition of empathy, right? I would I would say so. Mm, that's what I say. I mean, let me make you the solo layout for a minute. What do you think about that? I mean, honestly, uh, honestly um, I think a lot of us lack 
empathy. <laughs> you do? Yeah, because we're so caught up in our own world that we lack to see other people. We don't, we you know, we can't live in the same, uh, you know, area or live in the same space as someone else and see them for what they, and honestly, I think that may be some of the problem with, with people getting help because we don't see people. Um, we don't take time to put ourselves in their shoes. You know, we just think about where we are at the moment or I'm good. So, you know, who cares about somebody else, you know, but we have to do a better job at um, seeing people and putting ourselves in their shoes for real. I think that's uh, an art that we should get better at. I don't think we're going to really get past this question because I just feel it shifting already. And let me read it again because it gives us an assessment. It yes. says, am I regularly able to enter into another person's world and feelings? Mm -hmm. Just the, their world alone is enough. And their feelings and connecting deeply with them and taking time to imagine what it feels like to live in their shoes. First John chapter one, one through 14. That's of course the Jesus peace. Second Corinthians eight, nine and Philippians two, three through five. You know what? I've never been taught how to do that. And if you have. What you mean? How to connect with people deeply. Mm -hmm. Not on the surface level, deeply, because I'm a I'm a I'm very aware of uh, the damage, or can I use this word, the trauma bond that we can develop as people, and I don't know how much connecting I need to do with quote unquote Meredith, because if I go into her world and connect with her, and not appreciate the trauma that she's been through i can develop something that's really unhealthy between us as just humans not just you know boyfriend girlfriend boo bae husband wife we talking about entering into somebody else's world connecting me i mean mary that, that's that's like I, I was on something else before we started this and you know where we were but just that question alone how comfortable and who taught me how to do that honestly who taught me how to enter into somebody else's world who mm -hmm. taught me how to connect with them deeply and then know what it's like to imagine to walk in their shoes i do I'm, you and i think that that's the reason why we're sometimes not able to forgive because mm -hmm. one one time i um i'm just gonna be transparent i was uh my dad really made me mad about something <laughs> and the way my dad um the way my dad disciplined was to make you feel small in, in hopes that you would change because of what he said mm. but actually what he sometimes what you say can create animosity not get them to do what you want them to do so he uh, he learned early on that was just early on in my childhood but um i remember telling my mom um i can't stand it just going off just going off to my mom and she tells me have you ever put yourself in his shoes do you understand the, the the upbringing that he got do you understand where he come from do you understand the trauma that he goes through and i'm like uh-uh i don't she was like, but if you did, you will be, you'll have a little bit more grace. And sometimes we don't have grace for people because we did not put ourselves in their shoes and we didn't connect with them enough to understand them. So then when we do that, then we create this, uh, that they should do this. Da, 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 da. But mm -hmm. then if you understood where they came from, you would have some more grace or if you understood if if you had went through the same thing that they went through you would have a little bit more grace and that's just what empathy is all about and it takes those teachable moments like that in your life to understand where people come from and and why you should have more empathy 
But I think that we just bypass. I don't. I don't know. I think we think too much more, more, much more about our feelings than we do somebody else's. So then we can't really see anybody. We can't see nobody else. And that's a barrier that stops us from forgiving. It's a barrier that stops us from uh, from a lot of different things, to be honest. And I'm the word grace is deep. I'm listening and I'm chewing. So teach me. We've shifted now. <clears throat> teach me how to connect with Meredith. How, how do I connect with Meredith? Because connecting with Meredith or connecting with Cornelius in my world, you you might not have the grace to do that. Does that make any sense? Because I've got connecting with people can be it, it, it can be full of joy. It can be full of hurt. It can be full of pain. <clears throat> it can be full of the affirmative. It can be aggravating when we talk about connecting with people. Like, I, I'm going to be honest. There possibly is a risk. That's the thing. Okay. That's okay. the thing. And I, I go back to your, uh, the Capri Cares uh, motto, know that I care and care that I know. People don't know how much you care about them until you show them how much you care. And they're not going to give you every piece of them until they see that you care. So my thing is with the information that I give you, are you going to care enough to offer solution, to offer an ear, to not judge me, to not uh, uh, to have grace towards me, to have all these things? A lot of times when people when you come into a relationship with somebody, I don't care if it's friendship, uh, marriage, whatever. First of all, I'm going to have to, to know how much you care. And you show me that with time. I think with time, you develop empathy, you develop grace, and then it's vice versa. It's a kind of reciprocal thing. So I I think that in certain aspects that it's all about trust. It's all about a trust thing. You're not going to tell me your whole life story until you can trust that I can hold it. That I won't tell everybody in the neighborhood, or that that I I won't look at you different. Who know who who how many out there who are people that God has called still have different things that you've struggled through that you can't trust everybody with because then it's oh I I I think I I said this to you or somebody else oh well I thought she was a woman God I thought but that doesn't exclude me from having feelings. That doesn't exclude from me from having, you know, uh, different thoughts and different things. And there's in and, and there's certain people in my life that I can tell those things to that know that at the end of the day, even though I have those feelings, I am a woman of God that God has called. And I'm probably going to have those feelings that much the more because it's going to fight me more than it fights you. You know, and at the end of the day, we cannot really disclose things to people because we don't trust them and that goes along with empathy that goes along with that so back to the question i am regularly able to enter into other people's worlds and feelings <laughs> connecting deeply with them and taking time taking time to imagine what it feels like to live in their shoes yes not very true sometimes true mostly true very true i mean that one question alone let me do this that one question alone see it's shifted now see now i'm in a space to i don't listen i'm not emo not just saying me just universally i possibly might not be emotionally healthy enough to enter into your world and to connect with you in that place. Well, this is, well, let me ask you this question. I will ask. How do you normally, I know you have friends. I know you have people that, um, 
that rely on you to tell you different things, especially you being a pastor, they tell you things that they may not tell nobody else. How do you deal with those situations? Prayerfully. Um, prayerfully, 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 because as a leader and because I'm a shepherd, let's just say this, the wool of the sheep, mm -hmm. the wool of the sheep is often and always attached to me personally. That's the best way I can put it. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, and communicating strategy and communicating the right message for that person when I know their wool, there has to be a certain level of emotional health for me. Right. Because, because of all the wool, I might start seeing the wool and not the worth. Right. And for a leader who only sees the wool but not the worth, that can put him or her in a bad predicament. Right. Because Moses struck the rock because he had an unhealthy emotion. Right. And it prevented the whole world, man. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> so. Mm -mm. Do you oh, think it has something to do with the heart? Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't your emotions give your heart a voice and language? Oh, yeah. So you need to express them. You need to explore them. Mm -hmm. But I have to find healthy ways to express and explore, even as pastor or leader, because if I don't, whatever's connected to me will suffer because I did not have the opportunity to express and explore that emotion. Right. So what do we do? That's, that's the thing. For so many years, we have swept things under the rug because we couldn't say nothing. We have um, gone through alone. We have... Uh, and I'm not even saying emotion financially and everything we've gone through alone, which took a toll on our emotions and everything else. Um, we have, um, it's so many things that we've suffered because we didn't have anybody to connect to that understood the, that understood who we were, that didn't have, that had an eye. And I'm, a, I'm even going to say that spiritually, like we have to have an eye to hear. I mean, we have to have an ear to hear. We have to see with different eyes. We can't, we got to see out of the same eyes that Jesus saw. When he, when he healed the blind men and, and made the deaf uh, hear and all of that, it came out of a place of empathy. It came out of a place of love because I don't want you in this state. As long as I'm God, you're not going to have to go through these things. And, and when, when Lazarus died, going to, to see Lazarus and, and raising Lazarus, just all these different things that Jesus did, he did out of a place of empathy. And so we have to have the same thing. We have to put ourselves in that, in the shoes of other people without being wounded ourselves. I think that when you're not in an emotional state, then what do you do? Can, do, do you say, okay, I'm going to still deal with this situation, even though I'm not emotionally stable to do so? Or do we have people, our entourage or somebody around us that we can either go to or say, hey, can you handle this situation? You know, we got to put some different things in places because in actuality, nobody is 100% okay all the time. We will go through seasons, but what do we do? What do we have set in place for those times when we're not able to deal with certain things. Do we have that? Well, we are learning to have that. Let me say that. Because that one question, entering into someone else's world, okay. connecting with them deeply and trying to feel what they feel or walk in their shoes. Yeah. 
very, you have to, that, that comes with a certain level of maturity. You talked about it, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus was 100% God. <laughs> yes. But he yes. was 100% man. Yes. So he, he had a level of maturity that we just don't have. Yeah. As people. So I'm learning that though. And that's something, this conversation is something that you and I really never had growing up in church. Yeah. We, we just be holy, be saved, be sanctified, be filled with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues, fall down, shout, do all these emotional things which were healthy in those spaces. Mm -hmm. But then how do I live after I come out of the B, 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 do, 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 do. Now that you Nobody told me that. They yeah. just said do. They told but, So you did it to the best of your ability of what you thought that holiness was or what you thought this was, you know, but we never was really taught really how, just like you said, nobody really taught any us empathy. It was just implied like it was just supposed to be. But how do you really have empathy for someone? Now, I could say that you can't sympathize with somebody unless you are have, have actually been there. But you mm -hmm. can actually feel someone with your heart and what they need and if i and i've gotten to the point where if i don't have it i'm not going to try to have, help you but i am going to help you to get find somebody that can have it at that time because mm -hmm. i understand that we're all in all in this together and you might not come to me or to my training session or to my uh, coaching session or whatever but i do know a coach that can help you i do know somebody that can help and i've had to do that so many times and when you're a coach christian counselor whatever all those things are on you and you have to sometimes oh, um, load that on somebody else as well. So you have to find the balance between uh, between um, taking on so much, but you have to also have to let off enough as well. You can't take on a, a so much and not ever lay it off on something else. So it it's just, I don't know. Um, empathy, I would say, have to be taught. Uh, moving on and we're going to stop there y'all because we're only going to do this for 25 minutes and we just on the icebreaker it says these these are the three dynamics of the incarnational life entering someone else's world Jesus was able to do that mm -hmm. holding on to yourself and then hanging between the two worlds that is very interesting when it talks about the emotional healthy church and where you and I are. Is it possible that we can enter into somebody else's world, hanging on to ourselves? And I mean, I'm not, I have some emotional intelligence and competencies, if I can say that, but I really need something. I really need something to scaffold, bring me to a whole nother place where, hey, you're about to lead people. And in leading people, I go back to the slide, you're going to un understand you're entering into that world regardless because you have influence as a leader. You're entering into that world. Yes. Now, I'll say this and we can just close out on this. <laughs> wow. Remember the rich young ruler? Mm -hmm. I think he had good intentions but he was not incarnational. He was really not ready to enter into the world of Jesus right. because the text said, listen, his reaction was he went away sorrowfully because a human emotion emerged from a challenge that he was not ready to accept. So help me, help me unpack that suitcase when I'm not real ready to embrace and accept challenges that really take me to my next level or even lead me to a sorrowful place. Do you have any words of encouragement? <laughs> Where is, I'm just, help me because you and I come over. We, we, we here now. We are that generation that has to reach back and say, okay, we wouldn't take anything for our Christian journey and maturity. Mm -hmm. But there are some like Cheerios. There are some holes yes. that we didn't talk about. And now 
our generation is falling in these holes. I see and, it. And it's like, what in the world is wrong with you? And you know mm -hmm. what? Just by the grace of God, when we no, because we have fallen in them too. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, you and I have found ourselves climbing out of some of those holes. So help me with my response when I'm faced with that challenge. Like, where are you in your listening and what does it mean to be incarnate? Like, am I, do I listen to myself from, from a healthy perspective? Does that make any sense? It does. It makes a lot of sense. I'm just, you know, I think we're all figuring it out. And that our generation is the one that has figured it out and that is trying to figure it out, that's trying to fix what has been broken. You know, we we should have been allowed to be holy and be and ourselves. Human. And human. Yes. Not sinful. Be, and be not, yeah, not sinful. But, but people who God wants us to be, I'm not supposed to be sister so-and-so. I'm not supposed to be brother so God made me just who I am. And he wants to use me right here in in as me, as my whole self. And I think that's a, a lot of us are not authentic anymore. We're cookie cutters who was made to be like others. And then we didn't deal with the things that we could did didn't know about because nobody knew about it nobody knew what to say when we go to to, to the pastor or whatever about this he don't know what to say so he goes to say go pray about it. you know <laughs> i prayed about it so now we, you know well, so <laughs> I, right i prayed i prayed already i prayed no i did or pray. teach me how to pray in the manner that i'm supposed to pray in order to get this thing taken care of you know it's not just some things like the scripture said, come by fasting and praying, but nobody taught us that, or nobody said, oh, I understand what you're dealing with. So like, let's get, let's go, come over here. I got to tell you something. You know, I, I understand. I understand. But that's what I'm doing now. When somebody comes to me with difficult situations or whatever, I understand. I've been there. I've done that. Spent the night. Come on. I, I got something for you. I'm going to tell you what the real deal is. And then we got some work to do. Because if we don't work, it's going to take you over, baby. I understand. <sighs> so it's, it's so somebody being real. And that's the empathy. That's that's a different type of empathy, but it's it's empathy. But that's entering into somebody's world. Entering their world. And connecting with them. On another level. That and come on, let's judgmental. have a yes. And not being judgmental. Yes. And that's the whole reason why I'm entering into all the certifications that I am. You know, the Christian counseling and all that stuff, because I want to show different. I don't want to counsel you and say it's going to be all right and go swip it on the rug and keep going. One day your rug going to get so big that you're going to stumble over so bad you're going to hurt yourself. And you probably already did. You know, so we have to we have to cultivate our young our young people. Let them know that what you're feeling is okay, but what you don't want to do is this, because then this leads to this, and this leads to that. So this is what we're gonna do, and I got some solutions for you, because I so like you said, entering into their world, seeing them for what they listening, hearing them. You got to use all your senses when you're dealing with people. You got to see them. You got to hear them. You got to doggone smell what's going on, what the rock yeah. is cooking. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to smell what the rock is cooking. Mm -hmm. You got to be empathetic enough mm -hmm. to say something and do something rather than say, you know, it ain't my problem. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. I have, have had somebody to say, I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't never been through that. When mm -hmm. I know clearly you have. Yeah, you've been here. You've been here. You don't want to say it, but you've been here. Hmm. And what did you do? Or did you not do the right thing? You don't. And 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 we need to figure out what, what we can do about this. You know, even if somebody says, hey, let me grab you and let's figure this thing out together. That's what we need. You know, it ain't hmm. always about having all the answers. Right. Because I don't have them all. I don't have them all. Wow. But it might, it might be me loving you enough to say something and to help you and to put you in the right direction. Mm. Well, you have for me tonight and we're closing on that note, but we got to go to our last slide because, hey, we're educators, which 
you're a professional development coach and trainer. So, you know, voila, three things I've learned tonight. I might not have three, but I do have one. <clears throat> that empathy require, it requires courage. Mm -hmm. Like to enter into somebody else's world is going to require courage. Two, you know, I love to alliterate because that's the Baptist in me. Not only will it require courage, empathy will require character. Wow. I like that. So you got courage, you have character, but also empathy will require compassion. Yes. So those are the three things I take away. For me to enter in somebody else's world, courage, character, and compassion. Because I do not want to inf infiltrate your world and your emotions with my toxicity. Right. I don't want to do it. Courage, right? Character and compassion. You got any share outs? Because we're going to shut it down right there. I like that. Courage, character, and compassion. Any share outs for you? Any share outs? I that that right there it hit me the the character part you need to go deeper into the character we'll talk about it next week so, about we'll talk about it next week now mm -hmm. tell everybody where they can find talk meredith real fast at <laughs> www.talkmeredith.com you can go on youtube uh, with talk meredith you can uh go to my facebook page talk meredith uh, my podcast is totally affirmed, and uh, you can find that on all the major podcasting uh, networks. So, well, hey, find her, talk to her. She has courage, she has character, she has compassion. Hey, thank you for tuning in to another edition of Emotional and Healthy Church. I know y'all like, we only did one thing. Listen, when the spirit yeah. moves, right. I got y'all know I'm very scripted when it comes to this. I got all these slides. I showed you these slides, but that one icebreaker. We need to podcast this, Meredith. I think we need to podcast this. Possibly y'all tomorrow, even though that's my day off. But I need to. We need to really dive deep into this. But anyway, Heavenly Father, we thank you and for giving us this particular opportunity to share your word with your people. We know, Father God, how unhealthy we are emotionally and entering into somebody else's world and their feelings, not just their world, but their feelings. I can't compromise who I am because of how other people feel. That's a word for somebody. Somebody right now that's listening, will listen to this. They're compromising their integrity because of how the person they walking with feel. And we learn through the Bible, when you start compromising based on feelings, it's usually detrimental. So, Lord, thank you for that rhema, even in prayer. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, hearts have not felt the things that God has prepared for those who love him. It's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in to the Emotional Healthy Church. Chapter number 10, I do apologize. Oh, principle, yeah. Chapter 10, principle number 6. To live, making an incarnational life your model. Until next week, peace and blessings.